Hi, my name is Lala, and today our group Lemon Tree will be presenting our final Man and Environment project called Mix and Match for Sustainable Fashion. I'll hand it on to the next person. Today, we want to address the environmental problems that our world is currently facing, most of which are caused by human activities. Fashion industry, as one of the largest polluters in the world, is contributing to greenhouse gas emissions, textile waste, and excessive resource usage. In order to address this problem, we believe that it requires a collective effort from everyone, starting with individuals' responsibilities in clothes consumption. As stated, the context of our project is fast fashion, which is a very large-scale issue. So we decided to scope it down to tackle this problem in a smaller scale, such as in Chulalongkorn itself. So we did some research on some existing projects and analyzed them for the key points. After that, we derived these points and decided to use them for our objectives. This leads us to our group project game, Mix and Match for Sustainable Fashion. We, as a part of the community, would like to take part in acknowledging people about the negative consequences of fast fashion, since it could be an influence to shift their consumption practices into a more sustainable choice. Our two main objectives are to create a card game to represent carbon footprints from players' choices of clothing and to provide knowledge about fast fashion. The game aims to educate players about the impacts of their choices and to promote sustainable fashion practices. So after we have decided on making a game, let's move on to methodologies. So there are two main parts to this. The first one is where we actually make the game. And the second one is the part where we spread knowledge about fast fashion through this game. So starting with methodology one, which is the part where we start um, figuring out what type of game to make. The first step was, of course, to research. And the second one is setting the guidelines and instructions for the game. The third step is setting requirements such as the expenses and the type of materials that we need. Number four is sketching and designing. And number five is when we finalize and start the physical production. And to expand on methodology number five, our physical processes started with a discussion to finalize the design of the game and its graphical layout in order to maximize its clarity. This is done using sketches. After that, we traced the clothing items on a 3D modeling program and made sure that it would be compatible with our lab machines later. After that, we went to an um, in the lab, which is basically a place where architecture students work on their physical models. We looked for the most suitable materials that were left over. In this case, there were MDF boards, which other students have already used. Then we put those materials into a machine to be laser cut. There were also some post processes where we used cutters to refine the products into finished pieces. And finally, we assembled those pieces using hot glue and made some other additional game components by using the same processes. And here's also some pictures related to our production inside the lab. So after the long process of production, which we decided to make two sets, we divided these sets to um, one for the ballot group and one for the inner group so that we could start uh, collecting data by playing games with participants. And after collecting data, we did some data analysis of the carbon footprints per participant to sort of calculate whether our game was effective or not. So for the second part of our methodology, we wanted to provide our players with more knowledge on the issue of fast fashion. So we did this by first collecting information about the carbon footprint of the different clothes in our game. And then we repeated this process of collecting carbon footprint of clothes to the five different clothing groups we had in our game so that we could better compare and contrast how much different fashion groups produced waste. After this, we would conduct the actual game itself with some players. And after the players finish playing the game for one round, we will reveal the carbon footprint of their chosen clothing. And by doing this, our players will have further knowledge on the different types of fashion and how they differentiate in terms of sustainability and carbon footprint. After this, the player will replay the game, but this time with a more extensive knowledge of the different articles of clothing that they chose and how sustainable they actually were. And generally, from doing this, we would hope that they would pick more sustainable and lower carbon footprint clothes as a result of playing our game. So this is just a brief summary of how we separated our work methods. So we first started off by researching carbon footprint and discussing how exactly our game would work. Afterwards, we would prepare the game guidelines and instructions and figure out what materials we had to use. Then we would create the game physically by ourselves and work on compiling the data of the wastefulness of the items as well. After creating the game, we would test it out with some of our peers and friends, uh, adjust accordingly, and then we would actually test the game out itself and combine and analyze results. About the result, 
In the first round, the participant do not know the carbon footprint number and they are choosing the clothes without knowing the damage that those clothes will do to the earth. After the first round of playing, we have provided them with knowledge about the number of carbon footprint and the damage that it will do to our earth and give the participant a chance to play in the second round. The result has followed our expectation. Most of the participants in the second round choose the clothes that have the lowest number of the carbon footprint. Next, individual learning. By using the carbon footprint calculated from each material used in each type of clothing, each member of the group had the chance to learn more about how fast fashion affects the environment, including how much pollution, trash, and carbon emission the business produces. Additionally, participants were able to improve their critical thinking abilities and comprehend how intertwined complex topics like climate change and environmental degradation are. Next, corrective learning. Throughout the project, team members have had the opportunity to deepen their understanding of the fast fashion issue. They have also developed research skills, learning how to gather and analyze relevant information to inform decision making. The process of designing and implementing the card game has provided valuable insight into effective educational tools. The feedback and interaction with players have contributed to a better understanding of their perspective and concerns. This collaborative environment has fostered creative and problem-solving skill. So in conclusion, fast fashion has been continuously growing in recent years as one of the global issues and it affects our environment as a whole very negatively. We believe that our game has helped raise a bit more awareness on fast fashion and it would help people make better purchasing decisions and consumer behavior and we believe that it could help people become more aware of ways to minimize waste in fashion, be able to adapt these to their own personal habits that would benefit not only them but the environment. Ways of implementation, we believe that it could greatly impact a bigger circle by integrating this knowledge into future campaigns concerning fast fashion and just spreading awareness to other people. We believe that these little acts of spreading awareness and educating other people could affect even more than how much that we are actually aware of. We would like to express our deep gratitude to all the individuals who have played a significant role in the success of our group project on addressing the environmental impact of fast fashion. First, we want to express our sincere gratitude to our professor. Her expertise and encouragement have guided us through ups and downs, helping shape our ideas and overcome the obstacles we encounter along the way. We would like to acknowledge the immense contribution of our friends. Their support and constructive criticism have been instrumental in refining our project and pushing it towards excellence. Through brainstorming sessions and discussion, their diverse perspective and constant enthusiasm have enriched our work and propelled us to exceed expectation. Last but not least, we extend our gratitude to the participants who actively engage with our project. Their involvement has been invaluable in our research and data collection progress. Thank you for your time and attention. Together, let's us forge a path towards a more sustainable and responsible fashion industry. Thank you.